What is going on, my friends? Hank here from Spurs and Brews Scale Modeling. And as you can probably tell, we are not in the studio today. I am here at the American Heritage Museum in Hudson, Massachusetts, or Stone, Massachusetts. It's right on the line. It's about an hour outside of Boston. And this place is home to one of the finest collections of military vehicles anywhere in the world. Um, I love this place. I love coming here. I've been a member for quite a while now. And today, we're going to take a little buzz around the place and show you guys some of the fantastic artifacts that they have here. So I hope that sounds good to you guys. Without further ado, let's walk around and check some of this out. So when you come to the American Heritage Museum, the whole place is really nicely blocked out into sections based on the chronology of world conflicts and theaters of war, with the focus on the key vehicles that participated in each of these major actions. Contrary to what the name might suggest, the American Heritage Museum doesn't just house American vehicles, but instead has a thorough assortment of weapons used by nations that participated in major world conflicts from World War I all the way through to the 21st century wars in the Middle East. And unlike many vehicle-centric museums that you'll visit, the AHM and the Collings Foundation that operates the facility doesn't just display all their artifacts in pristine showroom condition. Each vehicle on display is dressed with historically accurate equipment and placed in a little mini diorama to help tell the story of how these tanks, half-tracks, aircraft, and artillery pieces were actually used in combat. The first half of the museum is exclusively focused on World War II, particularly the European and North African theaters, and has a representative of just about every major piece of military hardware used by the United States, Soviet Union, United Kingdom, and Germany that they could fit into this huge hangar. Each vehicle is clearly labeled with a fact sheet and some historical background information to help give context to what made the vehicle special, as well as the how and why it was used by the various armed forces. And you can get right up close and personal with these icons of World War II. The museum does a great job displaying everything with all the hatches and doors open so you can peek inside and get a glimpse of what it would be like to operate these weapons of war. And as long as you're respectful, the good folks at the museum are alright with you touching some of these genuine pieces of history. As you move deeper into the museum, the timeline shifts further into World War II. Some of my favorite parts of the museum are in these later exhibits, including several vehicles that participated in the Battle of the Bulge and the Battle of Berlin. Everywhere you look, there are extremely rare tanks and other armored vehicles on display, including several pieces that are either the only one on display in the United States, in North America, or in the entire world. And seeing this stuff on film doesn't do it justice. These things are huge. But you're just going to have to see for yourself when you make the trip over here. Now, as you might have seen, the museum doesn't just house ground vehicles. The AHM has several iconic military aircraft on display to help tell these important stories of the Second World War and beyond, including this stunning restoration of a BF-109G in the markings of 352 Victory Ace Eric Hartman. Even a comparatively small aircraft like the 109 is truly awesome to see in person. In addition, there are a few seaborne pieces in the collection, including this original Higgins boat that participated in the D-Day landings on that fateful morning of June 6, 1944. And the centerpiece of the World War II wing has to be this stunning restoration of a Panther Aufstrung A locked in combat with a T-34-85. This Panther, like many of the key pieces of the collection here, was painstakingly restored by renowned military vehicle historian Jacques Littlefield and his team prior to his death in 2009. It's an absolute treat to see this vehicle in person. It's the only one on display in North America, a truly awe-inspiring piece of hardware. As you move on over to the other side of the museum, you pass through a touching display on the Holocaust and liberation of the concentration camps as a stoic reminder of what we were fighting for in this terrible conflict. The second half of the museum starts with a relatively small display on the Pacific Theater of World War II, including an LVT-A4, the only one on public display in the US, and a Japanese Type 4 ho Ro SPG, the only one of its kind left in the world. Also in the Pacific section is this massive SPD Dauntless dive bomber, one of the newest additions to the museum, and one of the only pieces still in its original paint job. This Dauntless crash landed in Lake Michigan during training operations in 1944, and was fished out after nearly six decades sitting at the bottom of the lake. Just next to the Dauntless is the Korean War portion of the museum, featuring some of the key late World War II vehicles that were returned to service in the 50s to see the US through the Forgotten War including this M26 Pershing and the M7 Priest. And what kind of military museum would you be without a Jeep? You gotta have it. 
One of the most striking pieces in the museum is this Easy 8 Sherman in tiger face markings. I was fortunate enough to be in the museum a few years ago when they were working on this paint job, and it was pretty incredible to see. The frozen Korean War section makes way to the sweltering jungles of Vietnam, and one of my favorite displays in the museum. I just think they did such a good job with this diorama. And in here we've got an M41 Walker Bulldog, an M48 Patton, and a North Vietnamese PT-76. The newest addition to the museum at time of recording is this really impactful, immersive experience focused on the POWs of the Vietnam War. This multimedia display gives you just a glimpse of how horrible it must have been to be interred at the infamous Hanoi Hilton. I highly, highly recommend checking this out. It may not be as flashy as some of the big pieces of armor out on the main floor, but it's so very important. And at the back end of this second half of the museum, we've got some more contemporary pieces of equipment used in the Gulf War, the war in Iraq, and the war in Afghanistan. The centerpiece of this exhibit features an M1A1 Abrams, the only one on public display anywhere in the world that participated in the war in Iraq. And if you're lucky enough to be in town for one of the American Heritage Museum's demo days, they often get several of their tanks out and running for rides and driving lessons. If you'd like to see some more footage of a recent event I went to, I'll put a link at the end of the video here. I hope you guys enjoyed this quick virtual tour of one of my favorite places to visit. I'll pop some links down in the description below if you'd like to learn more, and if you get a chance to check out the museum for yourself, tell them Hank sent ya. Until next time my friends, be well, happy building, cheers.